So this Saturday, January 21st, we have this domestic middleweight clash between Chris Eubank Jr. and Liam Smith. Now, I think that this is a, a decent fight. Uh, I think it's somewhat logical next step for both guys. And I think there is some potential for it to be, you know, provide some decent entertainment, at least in spots. However, that's mostly when I assess the fight on paper. Because like many people, when you look at this fight from a stylistic point of view, I see it as being... Um, I'm, I'm very comfortably picking Chris Eubank Jr., which seems to be uh, the common thought process amongst the boxing fraternity, you know, the objective observers. The only people who I've seen picking Liam Smith to win are people who want him to win because they have a dislike of Chris Eubank Jr. But objectively, I think this really is a fight that Chris Eubank Jr. should win and also look quite good uh, in doing so. Because it's really no secret that over the course of his career, Chris Eubank Jr. has enjoyed a lot of success against pressure fighters. And Liam Smith, you know, you could probably say that he is the most capable and most experienced pressure fighter that Eubank Jr. would have been in with. But still, from a stylistic perspective, as I say, it's hard to see how Liam Smith won't play into Eubank Jr.'s hands. And now we've kind of seen Eubank Jr. going through a bit of a transition in his career from a stylistic perspective where he's employed Roy Jones and he's looking to add a few more aspects to his game. And I think there's been a, a, a large focus in his recent fights of looking to box at long range and address that aspect of Eubank Jr.'s boxing technique and IQ because it really has been lacking over the years. Because when Eubank Jr. has gone into a big fight, it's really, it's been a question of, okay, how can he get into position to where he really works well? You know, like a good example is against George Groves. A lot of people saw and understood how Eubank Jr. could win that fight because George Groves was a little bit shot-worn, um, not the greatest inside fighter himself, and didn't have the greatest punch resistance. So they saw how, okay, if Eubank Jr. can get into close range, he might just be able to shred Groves. But the question was, can Eubank Jr. get past, get through that long range, that long range jab, that long range right hand which are very powerful shots can he is he competent enough to do that and ultimately he wasn't he wasn't able to do that effectively and um it really highlighted okay eubank jr great fighter up close on the inside but at long range leaves a lot to be desired and i'm still not entirely sold on eubank jr's ability to fight at long range because when i'm looking at him even in his last fight against Liam Williams, and we'll touch on the Williams fight because I think it's there are some things to look at there. He, If you look at Eubank Jr. in that Williams fight where a lot of it was fought at long range, I'd, I'd go as far as saying probably the majority of the fight was fought at long range, um, it's, Eubank Jr. still doesn't look entirely comfortable. He certainly looks more comfortable than he did you know, years gone by. But there is still a bit of a... A look of amateur it's a bit amateurish his technique if you look at his arms they look like they carry a lot of technique uh, a lot of uh, tension same thing with his footwork as well it's not as tidy and it's not as fluid or fluent as his work up close you know when we see the the dozen punch uppercuts when he strings together all his hooks and uppercuts and body shots it's um you can see that it's not his primary nature it's not something that he has really had a lot of practice doing over the years fighting at long range that is and Liam Williams he I feel did a good job of uh, the way he approached that fight because it was really a long range fight but he had a very active guard did a good job of having a lot of dynamic elements where his feet were moving his head was moving his hands were moving and it created a lot of ambiguity because he was providing Eubank Jr. with a lot of different looks. So it's hard for Eubank Jr. to kind of really 
just get a stranglehold on the fight because he's unsure of what uh, Liam Williams was going to do. And that's that's part of having an active guard is you use it to have different looks and keep your opponent guessing, essentially. And Eubank Jr., even though he was in control for most of that fight, you did see how the pace really slowed down. And um, there was a lot of posturing in that fight, a lot of active guard and Eubank Jr. looking to get a reaction from Liam Smith. As I say, he ultimately got the victory and it was quite dominant in, in doing so. Um, but even though Liam Smith beat Liam Williams and proved that he was a superior fighter in that matchup, I still think that Williams stylistically presented more issues for Eubank Jr. than Liam Smith will be able to present Eubank Jr. Because Liam Smith, quite a basic fighter, comes forward high guards, um, quite consistent, so he does deserve credit for that. He's got very consistent guard and does use some very consistent pressure. He's a, excuse me, he's a fighter who does a good job of staying in front of an opponent and not expending very much energy. So he, um, you know, he's, he's quite efficient in doing so, but he doesn't really do much else. There's not really much else you have to consider from Liam, Liam Smith. He can do a a decent job of counter punching and, and punching in between the punches of his opponent but I'm not sure if that's going to be able to work against Chris Eubank Jr um, because I think even though Eubank Jr isn't the greatest long range boxer he is working on it but it still leaves a bit to be desired he is still going to be a bit more active than Liam Smith um, Liam Smith can really be quite a slow starter and um I think Eubank Jr. Will, will beat, potentially beat Liam Smith at long range with activity. But then even if it gets into a close range battle uh, on the inside, up close, I still think Eubank Jr. is just going to enjoy so much more success than Liam Smith. So I, I can't really see how Liam Smith wins this fight. Um, as I say, Liam Smith... Does ha he sometimes does a decent job of punching in between the movements of his opponent. And Eubank Jr., his, when he looks to disengage, he can be a little bit sloppy where he just pulls away from a shot. He, he pulls away from the engagement with his hands down, isn't really in position to, to offend his opponent or defend himself. And so maybe Liam Smith can have some success there. I don't know if he presses forward and looks to advance onto Eubank Jr. Eubank Jr. maybe stings him with a couple of shots and then looks to move off and move laterally. Maybe Liam Smith can capitalise there where Eubank Jr. maybe misjudges the range and isn't entirely defensively responsible with his hand placement and so on. Maybe Liam Smith can, can catch him out there. Um, but I'm not sure if Liam Smith has the the presence at long range or the ring coverage to use one of Dwyer's terms to really capitalize on that. So yeah, I just, I don't see how much success, I don't see Liam Smith having that much success in this fight. I think it will be a Eubank Jr. victory. And I imagine that you'll probably look quite good in doing so. So I really see this as a matter of how Eubank Jr. wins rather than if he wins. So I can realistically see how Eubank Jr. gets Liam Smith out there early. Because as I say, Liam Smith is a, um, a slow starter. Eubank Jr. is quite a fast starter. And even though Eubank Jr. isn't the biggest puncher, I think, in terms of the force behind his punches, he does have a lot of speed and a lot of velocity behind them, which can really um, shock an opponent. And then he puts his shots together and gets them out of there. So... I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. However, I do think Liam Smith is experienced enough to, even if he does get caught early, he'll probably be able to weather that storm. However, I I could see it going to points as well, but I do see Liam Smith maybe getting into the later rounds, maybe rounds nine or 10, and he's probably just accumulated a bit too much punishment. He's probably uh, shipping quite a lot of damage and most likely gets stopped on his feet whether the referee jumps in or his corner throws in the towel, you know, one of the two. I think it just gets to a point where Liam Smith 
uh, gets stopped on his feet. Eubank Jr. is probably just hitting him too regularly throughout the course of the fight with big shots, head and body, hooks and uppercuts. But then that's me assuming that uh, Eubank Jr. isn't going to fight in a conservative manner because where we've seen this transition from his previous style to this style that you, um, Roy Jones has looked to add to him, uh, he has been a bit more conservative with his offense. We don't see him throw as many punches in combination. He seems to go for quality, I want to say, rather than quantity, even though back in when Eubank Jr. was throwing up those crazy punch combinations, there there was a lot of quality to them. But uh, I think he's a bit more conservative with his offense these days. Um, however... I think you could say that there has been a degree of Eubank Jr. carrying his opponents in the past. Maybe he won't do that in a, in this fight, but we'll see. But for the most part, I'm fairly confident that he's going to stop Liam Smith rounds 9 or 10. Uh, Smith getting stopped on his feet and Eubank Jr. moves onwards and upwards to bigger things. That is just my opinion, however. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Are you picking Eubank Jr. to win? Are you picking Liam Smith to win? And do you think this is a decent fight? Because I've kind of seen a bit of a mixed reception to this one. Some people think it's a, a rubbish fight. It's a, a gimme fight for Eubank Jr. Other people think it's a, a good fight. And it's going to be you know, an entertaining scrap while it lasts. Let me know your take in the comment section below. But for now, thanks for listening. And I'll catch you in the next video.